epididymitis is the topic and epididymitis is obviously inflammation of the epididymis and uh, what is the epididymis exactly well the epididymis is essentially is a structure that is uh, adjacent to the testes and Epididymis essentially is um, in the scrotum attached to the testes and it stores the sperm. And essentially the sperm are in the epididymis until they mature. And then once they reach maturity, they are transported to the urethra. And that is the epididymis. Now, unfortunately, sometimes what happens is during sexual intercourse, you can contract a pathogen which can cause retrograde infection of the epididymis through the urethra. So epididymitis is essentially is a sexually transmitted disease, STD. And the two most common uh, pathogens that are part of the etiology are Neisseria gonorrhea, and the next one, chlamydia, trachomatis. So rem remember these two as the two main players in terms of the etiology of epididymitis. So what are the symptoms? Well, the first one, of course, is severe scrotal pain. A uh, patient will also have a fever during physical exam, you will notice that the scrotal uh, area is very swollen, very much a tender to palpation, and there will be erythema of uh, the epididymis, or the scrotum, rather, and then uh, also of the adjacent testes. And if there is a uh, associated uh, inflammation of the testes that is known as orchitis. Now there's one very important physical exam uh, uh, maneuver known as Prensine. And Prensine is important because it's something they can do easily but it can distinguish uh, some very uh, important uh, differential diagnoses from epididymitis. Prensine essentially is that you lift the testicle and see if pain is relieved. And if this is positive, meaning the pain is, defi uh, pain is relieved uh, when you lift the testicle, then that strongly supports epididymitis. But if this is negative, meaning the pain is not relieved, then that is actually starting to make you think of testicular torsion. And testicular torsion, I mention this because this is a very important uh, part of the differential of epididymitis. And I'll talk a little bit more about that during the diagnostic uh, section, which is now. So diagnosis. If you do the print sign and, you, and it's negative and you suspect testicular torsion, then you should definitely do a color Doppler ultrasound. And the reason is because if the torsion exists, the testicle can develop uh, ischemia and that can eventually lead to the loss of the testicle. So this needs to be done as soon as possible. If you're not suspicious of testicular torsion, the history and the physical exam pretty much point to epididymitis, then you can just make a clinical diagnosis and if you really want, you can do the urethral swab to isolate the organism. And then a urine culture is also commonly done. So how do you treat this? Treatment of epididymitis involves antibiotics, and there's quite a few. PO antibiotics, fluoroquinolones are commonly used, such as ofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, Another uh, antibiotic that's commonly used is doxycycline. 
and also trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. An IM injection is also used, and that medication is ceftriaxone. And another uh, supportive uh, measure that you can use is you can instruct the patient to elevate the scrotum. And scrotal elevation can be achieved with a jock strap that you can uh, purchase at any drugstore. So let's take a look at uh, some clinical vignettes. A 19 year old man comes to the clinic with a gradually worsening scrotal pain. He has no significant past medical history. He says he is sexually active with two partners and uses condoms occasionally. General physical exam is normal. Examination of the genitalia reveals a very tender left epididymis. The testes are normal. There is a whitish discharge from the penile meatus. Transillumination of the scrotum reveals no evidence for a hydrocele. To exclude testicular torsion, ultrasound of the testes is performed. It reveals a hypoechoic collection at the, uh, in the epididymis, and on Doppler images, the mass has no vascular flow. The intervention most likely to have prevented this condition is. So this uh, patient has epididymis, epididymitis and has progressed most likely to developing an abscess. So he's got an infection. And epididymitis is essentially a sexually transmitted disease that occurs with retrograde infection uh, to the epididymis from the urethra and during sexual intercourse. So the best advice to give him is that he needs is that he needs and he does mention in the clinical vignette that he uses condoms occasionally so that needs to be discussed with this patient. Next question. Sexually active 25 year old man develops epididymitis and orchitis. Needle biopsy demonstrates a prominent leukocyte leukocytic infiltrate with numerous neutrophils. Which of the following organisms is the most likely cause of the man's infection? Well, remember Neisseria and Chlamydia are the two main players involved in cases of epididymitis that are due to uh, sexually transmitted uh, disease. And that would be choice C. And then finally, 26-year-old man comes to the office because of three-day history of left-sided scrotal pain and swelling. He states that he's very sexually active and has had many sexual partners. He recently returned from a week-long vacation where he met lots of women. Temperature is 100, blood pressure is 120, pulse is 80. Examination shows unilateral intrascrotal tenderness. Scrotal skin is erythematous, warm, and there is partial obliteration of the rugal folds. Testicular support makes the pain less intense. There's a mucoid discharge present at the urethral opening. The most appropriate next step is... Well, he's got the classic history for an STD, and there's no uh, doubt about that. The clinical vignette really uh, points to that. But there's one part of the physical exam that really stood out. That's this. Testicular support makes the pain less intense. If you remember, that's Pren sign. Essentially, what that Pren sign does is you, when you lift the testicle, it relieves the pain. And since Pren sign is positive, that definitely points to epididymitis. So the treatment for epididymitis essentially is antibiotics. And if you really want, you can do a urethral swab or a urine culture to isolate the organism. And that would be choice B.